What does Daniel's Day mean to me? It means freedom. It means fighting back. It means justice. It means we will no longer stand by the abuse, the manipulation, the lies. It means we have the victory. What's up, y'all? This is Prayer Call with Shalanda. How y'all doing? How are you all? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Busy as always, taking the day to uh, a step at a time, getting one thing done at a time because that's all you can do. I'm doing excellent. I'm feeling vibrant. I'm feeling new. Last weekend, I took a little trip, you know, to just, you know, get myself together. You know what I mean? Like to just recoup and and relax and 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 have some self-care have some fun and smile and laugh and keep my mental going because there's so much that just goes on y'all so i hope and i pray that y'all have been doing the same with everything that has been going on in our community in this country and just as you become each and every day. Y'all already know what we got to do on prayer call with Shalanda. We got to pray before we get started. I got some good information for y'all, but let's get to praying, y'all. Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, we humbly come before you today declaring that you are a good, good father, that you are awesome, incredible, and there is no one like you. I thank you, Lord, that I can trust you. I thank you, Lord, that I can call on you. I thank you that you are my savior, that you are my protector, protector, that you are my healer, my comforter, that you, ha you are everything that I need and more. I thank you for having a listening ear, Lord God to hear us, oh God, to hear our cry, to hear our songs, to hear our praises, to hear our love, to feel our love, and, and just being everything that you are, Lord God. I thank you for every new thing that you're doing in the nation, every new thing that you're doing across this world, every new thing that you're doing in each individual lives. Lord God, I thank you for providing new ways and opening new doors and, and making a way out of no way, Lord God. Lord, on today, somebody is in need of something. And we don't know what that need is, but you know, you know everything, Lord God. So I ask now that you will provide that need, whether it's a healing, whether it's protection, whether it's a breakthrough, whether it's for someone to overcome, to walk in a new direction, to leave an abusive relationship, going to a new school, starting a new job, whatever it is, Lord God, I just pray that you provide, that you make way, that you have their way if it's healing for their child, whatever, Lord God, because we know that we all have different things that we are praying for, different things that we need, different things that we want, different things, different directions that we're going in, different ways that you're using us, Lord God. So I just thank you, Lord God, that you would just send your presence, send your glory throughout the nation and provide for your people, your children, definitely the youth, Lord God. Um, I pray that you give them a sound mind in this season, Lord God. I pray that they will not lose their mind in this season. We tear down the spirit of suicide, Lord God, the spirit of mental health, Lord God. We tear it down in the name of Jesus, Lord God. We just thank you. We thank you for prayer call with Shalanda, Lord God, and Vibes Radio Station, Lord God. We just thank you for allowing us to be used for your glory, to help others, to encourage, to inspire, to bring deliverance, to bring healing, to bring information. And teaching calmness, uh, great energy, whatever it is, Lord God. I just thank you for using us, Lord God, as we speak of, of justice and the injustice and and different things that are going on in our country, Lord God. I just pray that you open up the ears of the people in the minds and, and, and teach you know people to step outside the box to be the best them that they can be. We just thank you, Lord. We give you honor, we give you praise, and we give you glory in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Oh, my eyes was closed for a long time, y'all. I got a new light and boy, <laughs> I might have to dim it just a little bit because it is shining. You heard? It is shining. 
So before I started praying, I was just asking everybody, how are you doing today? Tell me how you're doing. Leave a message in the comments. And I can send you the link and you link and you can hop on and you can tell me what Daniel's day means to you. Um, as you can see, we opened up the um, prayer call with Shalanda with um, the statement of Daniel's day. Um, Daniel's day is um, on the 23rd of this month. We won't be doing absolutely nothing but supporting black businesses, supporting each other, uplifting each other. That's all we're going to be doing. There's no spending money in these stores and and with these people. OK, like we just we, we have to change some things. We have to cut off the money line. That's very, very important, Um, you know, for people who who don't care about a human life. They care about those dollars. You know what I'm saying? So we have to cut off those dollars. So t on the 23rd, no school, no work. OK, justice for Daniel. Proof. It is Daniel Daniel's proof day and we're going to make noise about it. We're going to stand when we if we don't get no justice, they don't get no peace. That's that's a statement. That's that's real. That's an action. You understand? No school, no work, no justice, no peace. We cutting it off, y'all. So if you don't know, now you know, and you can't say that I didn't tell y'all, okay? As I let y'all know, on March 23rd, no school, no work, lights out. Unless you're supporting, you know, your Black-owned businesses and stuff. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to Save Rochester. I have to always, you know, give a good shout out to somebody that's doing good in the community. You know what I'm saying? And this is one of Save Rochester's shirts. All Black Lives Matter, and I believe that wholeheartedly. So I'm willing to make this statement any given day. Y'all already know. So yeah, make sure y'all leave a comment below and let me know how y'all doing. Okay. So let's start this off. Well, first of all, I am going to shout out a black business, um, a new black business. Her name is Atiana Larkin. You can find her on Facebook and Instagram. It's E apostrophe T I A N A Larkin and she owns um client center she's a client center consultant she's a, has an LLC and what she does is she um helps you make a business plan getting your um LLC done logos websites y'all hit her up um this is a the, tomorrow, I mean, the 23rd will be a good day. If you haven't yet gotten your logo or your website done or your business plan or whatever to support this business, again, her name is Atiana Larkin. Her Instagram and her Facebook page, um, business pages is client center underscore consulting LLC. So, yeah. Shout out to Atiana Larkin for doing this um, for, you know, giving back and, and helping people to succeed in, in this time and um, creating something to, you know, helping people to move forward and, and having their own. Now is the time, y'all, to start your own business, to start your own company, to write the book, to start a podcast, to start your own radio station, um, to start because I, I know a lot of people that are doing it, opening up grocery stores and stuff like that. Now's the time. <clears throat> so, of course, on Prayer Call with Shalanda, I pray, but I also want to give scripture. And last week I gave a scripture and I just want to um, highlight on that um, one more time. Um, Cause I did watch my show and I made a couple mistakes, but <laughs> it's all good. Mistakes are good because I learn from them, and you know I learn how to um, make myself better. So I want to go back to Hebrews six and twelve. 
It says, we do not want you to become lazy, but to imitate those who through faith and patience inherit what has been promised. Um, with this scripture, I really love it because, you know, in the beginning, it tells us don't be lazy. Right now is not the time to be lazy in anything, in anything that you're doing. No matter what you're doing, now is not the time. Now is the time to Press forward. Now is the time to go harder. But, but you're going to go harder. You're going to do the research. You're going to learn. You're going to do more. But at the same time, you have to understand that you have to run your own race. Do you understand? This is your, this, this is not, um, a competition for you to when you begin to do anything that you're doing nothing is a competition with nobody else but yourself the old you the you from yesterday you know what i'm saying so you know my biggest thing in in this it says but to imitate those who through faith so you want to pay attention to people that have faith in something you know what i'm saying like faith in god knowing you know what i'm saying knowing that they're being led in the right direction, that they're growing, that they're bringing forth fruit. And when I say bringing forth fruit, I don't literally mean apples and oranges and bananas. I literally mean bringing forth something that has grown. You know what I'm saying? That's something that has turned into something, taking nothing, absolutely nothing, and turn it into something. Because when you have a tree, a tree doesn't just start with the fruit on it, it has you have to plant the apple tree. You have to plant the seed, right? You have to put something in the ground in order for the apple tree to grow into an apple tree. And there's steps to it. I don't know, you know, it, it's <laughs> it's steps to it. And as the tree grows, the last thing on the tree to grow is the fruit. You know what I'm saying? So just paying attention to those people and watching those people that are bringing forth fruit that can make changes in what they do. Now, that's not just staying stagnant, not just doing the same thing year after year, today and tomorrow. No, you pay attention to the people that are doing new things, that's expanding, that's, that's, that's doing, you know, more than what they did last year. They're not in the same spot. You know what I'm saying? That's how you grow. You surround yourself. You get into those circles of people that are 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 greater than you or 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 wanting to become something or creating something and, and, and constantly creating and, and wanting to feed into you too. Because you know you can get around a lot of successful people, people that are very fruitful with themselves. But when it comes down to them um implementing in, into somebody else. They may not be the type, you know, because there's some people that are, are jealousy and running a different type of race, like the competition race. So who can get there first? No, this is you. You, you going at your own pace. You have to learn when, it, when to put stuff down and you have to learn when to pick it up. Because next we talk about patience. Patience is the number one thing that you need to succeed in life is patience because nothing is going to happen overnight. You're not going to plant that seed in the garden and the next day you have an apple tree. No way. No way. There's a process. You understand what I'm saying? There's a process and anything that has a process has value. You want, you don't want it to be an overnight thing. Can you get the overnight thing? Yes, but mm, at the end of the day, there's preparations for different things. I thank God for all the things that I have been through. And I'm I'm looking back over my life and I'm reflecting and I'm saying, oh my goodness, this had to happen in order for this to happen. That had to happen in order for this to happen. I had to endure that. I had to I had to pass that test. I had to go through that. And then not only did I have to go through it, I had to learn the lesson in it because you have to remember there's a lesson in every trial and every tribulation. There is a lesson in it. And what I'm saying is be able to go through something and be patient with it and, 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 and understand that it's a process. It's a growing process. 
every lesson. And not every safe situation is going to be about relationships. Not every uh, uh, romantic relationships is what I'm saying. But there's other different type of relationships, like business relationships. I've been in business relationships where it's like, you know, we make the plan, we do it, we map it out, and then all of a sudden it's like somebody's going in a whole nother direction. It's not what we mapped out. But I, I thank God for that experience. You know what I'm saying? I thank God for that failed experience. I think God is paying attention of who I can work with and who I can't work with. You know what I'm saying? Different things like that. So I, I'm not preaching to y'all. Because I'm not a preacher, but I'm just giving y'all what God gives to me, you know, and together faith and patience produces the problem. Problem must. Remember, it says we do not want you to become lazy, but to imitate those who through faith and patience inherit what has been promised. There is a promise after the trials, the tribulations of faith, the faith, everything that has been. There is a promise. There's a promise. There's something at the end of every situation. Like, have you ever met anybody that has cancer, that has overcome cancer, that has had to go through the processes of getting uh, that end up losing weight, losing their hair and and not being losing their appetite, not being able to do those same same things that they normally do. But knowing there, there's a promise at the end of it. You're going to be healed. You're going to be able to walk again, talk again. I, I have women in my life that has had breast cancer that had to go through the processes in order to get the promise. But, but what God does with those situations is He increases your faith. If you understand what I'm saying, so those people that have been healed from cancer and things like that. Um, you know, they, they, they have to go through those processes. They have to have faith in those processes and, and, and learning the lesson in the process in order to give it to somebody else because we don't go through what we go through for ourselves. You know what I'm saying? Everything that we go through is for somebody else. Just like what I'm saying today. Like I had to go through some things in order to be able to say this out of my mouth. I had to fail multiple times in order to say this out of my mouth. You know what I'm saying? So understand that faith and patience produces the promise. And um, so that's last week. And I know that was a lot, but I don't care. Cause I'm going to give it cause God told me to, you understand what I'm saying? I I'm going to give whatever God um, tells me to give period. Poo. <laughs> okay. So this week's scripture is just simple. Something like, but it's needed. It's needed. Y'all it's needed. Proverbs 29 and 18. Where there is no vision, the people perish. Where there is no vision, the people perish. How can you get to the promise if, you know what I'm saying, and you, you get the faith, the, the patience, the love, the wisdom, the understanding, and all that other thing, but you, you have not done no work in the process. You're just sitting, waiting, sitting with faith, sitting with patience. You can't sit with faith because faith has its job. Patience has its job and you have its job, a job. So if you sit in there and you say, I'm just having faith, I'm just waiting. I'm just waiting with faith. Hey, faith. Hey, patience. We just waiting. It doesn't make sense. You can't wait with with um with patience and faith. You have to do your work. You have to do your research. You have to um watch a couple videos or something maybe or you know you have to go sit in some seminars and go sit down with some people. Maybe some people you don't even want to be in the same room with. Hello. Been there. I done sat in rooms and that tables where I don't want to be. 
but I knew that I had to be there. Why? Because God was telling me that I needed to be there because there's always, it was something that I needed. You know what I'm saying? So sometimes you got to go places you don't want to go. You know? Sometimes you have to go places you don't want to go. Sometimes you got to be around people that you don't want to be around. Sometimes you just got to do it. But without the without a vision, the people perish. It's like what we do in the community. We have to sit down and we have to plan out things because if we don't, we'll be all over the place. You know? We will be all over the place. But, you know, you won't have to be all over the place if you make, write the vision and make it plain. Continue to write. Continue to write. I'll never stop saying it. I'll say it every show if I have to. Only because I know what the instructions of making something great is. Only because I know what God has done for me. And it's not about me. Trust me. I can only use me. I, I can't really use, like I try to use other people's stories and other people's experiences, but it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. Only my story is going to make sense when I give this. Only my story makes sense when I tell it. It's my testimony. So I don't want nobody to think that I'm bigging myself up and I don't want you to feel small or minimized for what I'm giving and what I'm saying, because I know some people have found some things I've said offensive and I don't know why, because I don't talk about anybody on this show. What I am doing is giving you a God given plan, a God given structure of how to succeed in whatever it is that you're doing. I may not have the numbers and all of that, and I'm not an accounting or anything like that, but I have a word. I have word, and I, I have some power behind this word that God has given me, so I have to give it. All right, y'all. We're going to move right along, right along. I don't want to, you know, bring light to negativity, but... This is this is this is not negative to me. This is positive because I want us not only, you know, with me being a believer and me, you know, me talking to God and and I want to break generational curses and all that. Like there's certain things that get that I learn and and that I get different revelation on, you know, when God speaks to me, I get like crazy revelation on. So this is one thing that um, I want to talk to you guys about. And um, yeah, again, y'all going to have to bear with me every now and again. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm over here, you know, making sure stuff is going um, according to how I wanted to go. Okay. So sorry about that. Okay. So March 17th, 1851, today in 1851, a Southern physician, Samuel Cartwright, claims that he discovered a disease. He was a physician. He was a doctor. He he also was in charge of um, keeping areas clean. He at this time, he says that he was from the Confederate States of America, the racist state of America. Let's just say that the KKK ran state of America, the racist state of America, the dirtbags of America. Um, so he came, he discovered a disease, right, in 1851 called Drapatoma. 
Drapetomania. Sorry. It's called. <laughs> I'm gonna get this word right because I've been I've been having the computer tell me this word all the time. You don't. So Drapetomania. He discovered this, right? This makes African Americans want to run from slavery. This was a mental illness, Drapetomania, that this man, Samuel Cartwright, claims he discovered in 1851. Um I'm sorry if y'all can hear the background. So, yeah, this was a mental illness that slaves had. And the, the diagnosis of this drapetomania was it was slaves who wanted to be free. So he explained to the slave masters that um, if you feed them well, if you clothe the slaves well, if you um, you keep them out of you know um, bad weather, no storms, no really hot sun, and you make sure you give them water and stuff like that. And he was the the reason why they begin to separate the families um, and put them in their own houses. Because at one point in time, all the slaves were combined in one little hut or whatever. And, um, but he told them, separate them into houses and families and give them fuel at night, enough to keep the, the fire burning at night. And, but, see, it sound good, right? It sound good. It sound like he was like helping <laughs> It sounded like he wanted to make a difference, a change. But really, first of all, let's just say he was putting a generational curse on the people. Drapetomania, that's a word. So what we speak out of our mouth is very, very important. So this was a word that he put on slaves, on Black people, on African-American people. Drapetomania. And he started diagnosing these slaves with drapetomania. You know what I'm saying? That generational curses of names of things that they have put on us. And, ex and expect for us to take it. Now, let me say something too. We're not the only ones that have, that is dealing with this generational curse. Their own people are dealing with this generational curse because they have become, we all have become one, believe it or not. So they still, their culture, their people, they deal with the same things that our people deal with, you know, poverty, um, unemployment and stuff like that. And, and some people living in bad conditions and their people deal with the same thing. Period. Being violent. They deal with the same thing. So this was something that was meant to, you know, tear us down. Okay, so. Yeah, he he said provide the, the good wet, you know, don't put them out in good weather, provide them with good food, provide them with good clothes. Yet, if the slaves were to buck up at their master, their punishment was to drug them up with whatever type of drugs or medicine they wanted to and whoop them and beat them badly and, and, and terrorize them and treat them like children. I don't know what that means. I really don't know what that means to treat them like children. It's 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 weird to me because I I don't know what they mean when you say treat them like children. Like you're you're saying the punishment should be bad. You should whoop them and treat them like children so that they won't want to want to run away again. And then once they don't want to, they show those behaviors, they don't want to run away. You treat them good. You feed them good. You clothe them good. You make sure they they have their oil at night and their fires is burning. And, you know, it's just pathetic. It's just downright pathetic. How the 
thought process of a human being could even that could even be okay. It really does. And with mental health, I just feel like it's something that has been truly, it, it's a curse. It's a generational curse that's been, it's been, we have to tear it down. And we have to learn these names of these things that these people have put on us. Why? Because how do you tear down demons? How do you tear down strongholds? How do you um, break generational curses? You don't just break them by being. Sometimes you got to call out these demons. Sometimes you got to call out these names of these demons. You know what I'm saying? And that's how I see it. That's how God has given it to me. That's the revelation that he has given to me. That it goes all the way back to 1851. That, th that we are still to this day dealing with a generational curse that has been the, just the, it's like witchcraft. He, he was a doctor, but what did it take for him to diagnose somebody with Drake, um, Drake Timonia? What did he have to do? Did he have to Stick something down their throat? Did he have to check their temperature? Like, what did he have to do? Like, I'm I'm really confused. I really want to know. What did he have to do? What did he have to do to diagnose Drake to Mania? And I just think that it's so cruel. I mean, I can't, I'm not even going to get into it. But I want people to understand that there's ways that we can get around these, these type of things. And I think, and, and I'm telling you through scripture, I have healed. Um, using the word as my shield, I have healed. And there's lots of different scriptures to help you get through mental health and anxiety and different type of things. And one of them is Philippians 4 and 6 through 7. Don't be anxious about anything. That means don't be in a rush. Like, don't just slow down. Slow down and slow down your life. Slow down your mind. Take your time. Don't be so in a rush. Because, you know, there's a lot of brilliant people that have not even stepped into anything that God wants them to step into. You want to know why? Because there's so much anxiety. In them, they're so anxious. If it doesn't work the first time they do it or the first time they try, they quit. People lose their mind behind that. People lose their minds behind not being able to do the things that they love to do, not succeeding, keep trying back to back over and over again. People really do lose their minds behind that. So don't be anxious about anything. But in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, pray. Listen. Get, get, get an understanding. Meditation was something that really, really helped me to calm my mind because I know that it was just so, it's so much more. Oh my God. Like it's so much that I want to do. Are you the type of person that just know that there's so much that you want to do? There's so much inside of you, but some things you, you're, you're striving in, some things you're doing good in, and other things you haven't even begun to start. That's real. It's real. But I begin to meditate. I begin to calm my spirit. I begin to get into quiet places and quiet, dark areas and, and set in the atmosphere and listening and, 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 and taking my thoughts to other places. Somewhere higher than me, because I couldn't, you know, it, it just, it's a lot. It's a lot. So we don't want to be anxious, but we want to pray and with supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. Speak to him. Tell him. Write it down. Hello.
And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard, guard your hearts and mind in Christ Jesus. So if you're just um, getting on, we were talking about um, we we're talking about a man. His name is um, Carl Cartwright, and he was a physician. And he um, he diagnosed African Americans in eighteen fifty one. And I just want to make sure I say this right every time, y'all. So I have my I have my computer telling me what it is because it is important that we say this right. Drake the Mania. I bind Drake the Mania in the mighty name of Jesus and send it back to the pit of hell wherever it came from. It's been here since 1851. And Drake the Mania, you gotta go. You do not belong in my people. You do not, you cannot have their minds. You can't have their hearts. You can't have their bodies. You can't have their mindset. Whoever this man is, Carl, Carl Samuel. Cartwright, sorry, Samuel Cartwright, I bind that spirit, that spirit of manipulation. I send it back to the pit of hell where it belongs. My people deserve to be free. My people are free. Every day we're getting freer and freer and freer, okay? That's how I see it. If nobody else see it like that, I'm sorry. Y'all might think I'm a little crazy, but at the end of the day, these spirits are real. These curses are real. These things are real. These quote unquote uh, discovery of diseases is real all put on us. It's real, y'all. It's real. Let's keep it moving. Actually, um what I'm gonna get ready to do is just I have I have so much um a couple more things that I want to get, but we are time be going by. Look, I'm I'm having fun. I'm enjoying this. I don't know if you guys are. If you're on, say hello, say hi, comment, say something, say how you're doing. Um, give us give some feedback. I see I have viewers, but nobody's seeing me. So what I'm going to get ready to do is I'm going to show a little bit of my business, um, La La Closet. Yeah. Um, if you're just tuning in, this is Prayer Call with Shalanda. And we just talked about a couple of things. Um, so you're going to have to go back and you're going to have to watch this over in order to see what it is that we've been talking about. But we're going to go right along to... Um, Lala's Closet and show a couple of pieces that I have. You can go to www.lalascloset.net. Um, that is where you will find Lala Shea Butter. That's where you'll find um, new earrings, necklaces, bracelets. Yes, that is my Shea Butter. It is good, good, good to the body, okay? It makes your skin smell so good, feel so good. That is a new earring. I have, um, I call them African printed earrings, different designs. That is the Sunset Queen. Yes. I just want to show y'all a couple of pieces of Lala's Closet. So y'all make sure y'all go to www.lalascloset.net and shop with your girl. Y'all see them earrings? I have those on right now. Shop with your girl. Go check out the website, www.lalascloset.net. Yes, that is a bracelet. I have so much other stuff. I know I said this the last show, but then it, 
I was able to get more of from last week. And I'm telling y'all, I'm at, I'm in no rush. I'm taking my time. Um, so yeah, go check out my new earring line. Yeah, like this. I love these. I am I am so, so, so in love with these earrings. So yeah, I had to add it to Lala's closet. And also you can um get your closet done. So make sure you just go to www.lalascloset.net. Yeah, go follow me on Instagram, Lala's Closet underscore SJ and um um uh, prayer call with Yolanda, duh. And Lala is with a Z underscore blessed. Okay. And um, yeah, follow me on Insta. All right, let's uh, keep it a uh, moving. So I was watching the news, and of course, I had to bring this up to y'all. CNN reported that the record number of kids in Border Patrol custody and shelters is crazy. I mean, they are saying that the increase is insane. So there is a number of kids coming over here from Mexico and they're without their parents. Um, before it was that when it was under the Trump administration, it was that the uh, the children and the, the parents were being separated, treated bad, all kinds of stuff. Um, but now um, I was able to see an interview with Biden and he was speaking some very good things. And I hope and pray that this is really happening um, he's asking that they they don't, you know, come over, just come over that way, but to stay where they are and help is on the way and that they're helping the people, the children and the people that are already in the system, the children per se, they're connecting the children back with their families. Um, they're doing it through um, DHS and um, FEMA. So, which is, is a good thing. And I'm praying for these children that they get stability and they get, if their moms and dads are still out there, or they have family that are out there that they get back connected with their families. I think that's very important. And I just want to pray for them really fast. Father God, I just ask now, I just thank you, Lord God, and I ask now that you watch over these babies and, and these people that are in patrol custody, Lord God. I pray that you would stop them from coming over, but to allow them to be patient for the help that is coming. And I pray that they will move faster and speed up the processes, that, that you will provide everything that is needed for these children, for them to be in proper homes and getting proper care and being fed properly and bathed properly. Lord, I thank you for what you're doing in the doors that you're getting ready to open in Jesus' name. Amen. Yeah, my heart goes out to um, those children. My heart goes out to those families. Some children have come over because um, they're, they already have family over here. And some are coming because... Um, They're, they're saying that the conditions there are really bad. The coronavirus is horrible. So that's another thing. So I'm just, I just pray that the government would just speed up processes. I mean, I understand they're saying we can't just jump on it. It's a process. It's new things. And Biden only been in office for, you know, a couple months. So he got to give him a break, you know. But uh, <clears throat> yeah, Biden. Get on that. Get on that. Get on it, Biden. Get on it. Get on it. All right, y'all. Let's go to gospel media. What is going on in the gospel media? Y'all already know. If you don't know, you will know today. Kirk Franklin. My guy. That's my guy right there, Kirk Franklin. I got a little video that I want y'all to listen to, and then we'll talk about it right after the video, please. Oh, 
in that conversation and I lost my temper and I said words that are not appropriate and I'm sincerely sorry to all of you I sincerely apologize I want you to know as a father that during that conversation I called the family therapist and got that therapist on the phone to try to help he never played that part of the recording I'm not perfect I'm human and I'm going to make mistakes and I'm trying to get it right Please keep me and my family in your prayers. All right, y'all. So as you can see, there has been an issue going on in the house of the Franklins. Okay. He said that they've been going through this for a really, really long time. The chaos, the, the disrespect. First of all, I'm going to say to Kirk Franklin, you do not have to apologize, sir. There is no way that we should accept that apology. We understand that you are human. And yes, you are God's child. You have, have done God's work. And we're going to get to that. You do not have to apologize. I am one and I am a strong believer of not cursing at my children and not, you know, being too harsh, you know, but let me tell you something, to be a parent and to have raised the child, done your very best to make sure that your children have the best and be the best, and they turn around and they disrespect you, like, how could you? How could you disrespect me like that and curse at me? And, you know, and then you have the nerve, you have the nerve to be recording it and showing the world how disrespectful you are. Like, no. To your father who have has raised you, have worked his behind off to take care of you and your siblings, no way, Jose. No way, shape, or form. And I'm like, oh, Kirk Franklin is wrong. Oh, he's supposed to be a God driven. Oh, he's supposed to be a gospel singer. Yes, that is what he is. Not supposed to be. He is that. And he has been that. And when a child is disrespectful, it's frustrating. And sometimes the words just don't come out. If y'all want to act all holier than thou, like y'all don't be cussing people out sometimes that need it. Okay. And I, I mean, he, he said what he said. If you disrespect, boy, he, I, and I bet he wouldn't have did it to Kurt Franklin's face. Because Kurt might be small, but he's a father. You know what I'm saying? I just imagine him climbing him like a tree. You know, like... That was just downright disrespectful. And Kirk Franklin, you don't have nothing to apologize for. You are a man of God, and it has been evident. Okay? It has been evident. So, yeah, besides that, this is someone that has always been very inspirational in my life because of how different he is. Um, he was rejected by the church. He was rejected by the older people. He took a stand on something new. Um, he turned gospel music into more of a, a um, upbeat, up tempo. Um, I'm looking for the word, um, but yeah, he he's more. He was he's just a happy person, just full of life and and um he was an outcast and and the church talked about him and they didn't want to accept him they didn't want to accept the new thing that god was doing in that time but let me tell y'all something kirk franklin was popping in the 90s and he's popping in 2021 okay and one of his artists is one of uh, uh, artists that we all love and adore chance the rapper like 
Um, Oh, okay. My opinion. Okay, I'm I'm gonna read a comment that Gloria Jackson wrote. She said, My opinion on this, it's wrong to be so judgmental and act as if this has never happened in any of us. Absolutely right. He's a human with bad days just like anyone else. Things happen to us one day on days. That's where that's when we're at our breaking point. He's in the spotlight, so he's going to be judged quick, which is true. The son was very disrespectful. I pray for him because it's not far. It's not fair that he's looked at worse than anyone else. If anyone should apologize, it should be his son. We're all a work in progress. Keep your head up, Kirk. Yes, thank you, Gloria, for that. That is so true. If anybody needs to apologize, it is Kirk Franklin's son, who needs to apologize and make things right with the media, with us, the people, because we love Kirk Franklin and we admire him. And, you know, I mean, I, I felt him in that instant and I, I just really felt like that was just horrible. And I really hate that he had to go through that. And even to the humiliation of having to get on camera and say, I'm sorry, I apologize for what I said. No, like, that's so wrong that he had to do that. He he didn't have to do that. His son should be, you know, he tried to expose his father, but really made himself look really, really dumb. Like, come on now. That's just bogus on so many levels. Um, but yeah, like I was saying, he has an artist, Chance the Rapper. He 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 signed Chance the Rapper, and he's working with be beautiful women like Fantasia and Kelly Price. And he's a family man. He's a loving husband and a loving father. His other children have spoken out and said amazing things about him. His daughter said, "Imagine somebody being continuing to be disrespectful to you, continue to just be outright wrong and and treat you any kind of way." And you get frustrated. Exactly. That's it. So we love you, Kirk Franklin. We're praying for you. We're praying for your family. We're praying that things turn around. We're praying for your son, that he can find a change in heart and that God will take that hardness from around his heart and soften it and give him an understanding um, of respecting his parents. You know, so, yeah, you are always in my prayers. Um, I love this quote that Kirk Franklin said, he always finds room to evolve while sharing God's message and music. Keep doing your thing, Kirk Franklin. Like, I'm inspired, even though I hurt the I smile. I know God is working, so I smile. Even though I've been here for a while, I smile. So hard to look up when you've been down. I ain't going to get into it, y'all. I really want to go in. But Kurt Franklin is my guy. He got me doing a lot of things, okay? So for him to be going through that, mm -mm. yeah, <laughs> I'm feeling like Wendy Williams. How you doing? <laughs> I need to cut it out, okay? Cut it out. All right, y'all. Let's get to our Women's Month tributes i love 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 the women and it is March, and we're still in women's month and we still have to celebrate our beautiful beautiful women and y'all already know i love the women of today i love the women of yesterday the women of 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 the past i do i do i do but i want to celebrate the women that are doing amazing 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 things today okay so Felicia Dove is the first woman that I want to shout out for um, Women's Month. This is a phenomenal woman. And she actually says this all the time. I have been following this woman since she was in college, y'all. But this is a grown woman with a husband, with children, with businesses. I mean, she's doing amazing 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 work her store is called black monarchy you can shop at www.blackmonarchy.com that's black space m-a-n-a-r-c-h-y black Mon monarchy and it is located at 527 west utica street in buffalo new york that's 14213 
that is the location of her store. It is all African print, African inspired, everything to the Rudy to the Tootie, okay? And she also is the owner of I Am Phenomenal LLC. So you can follow her on Facebook and Instagram at Black Monarchy. And on Facebook, she is I Am Phenomenal with a PH, not um, her name is Felicia, but it's P H Y L I C I A. So, yes, yeah, that is my first girl, Felicia Dove. I love, love, love this woman. I really, really am inspired by her, inspired by the things that she does in the community. She is an activist in Buffalo, not just a business owner. Excuse me, y'all. Um, so yeah, she is doing, doing amazing things. She is a woman of God and I'm just loving what God is doing in her life. All right, y'all. So last but not least, my girl, which I am so surprised that I waited this long to even do this. I should have did it the last show, but it is what it is. My girl, Sarah Jakes, y'all. Y'all know who Sarah Jakes is. Look at her styling and profiling. Pastor Sarah Jakes. She is the preacher of the nation of the of the years of years and years for our generation. Let me tell y'all. I mean, I have taken instructions from this woman. I have definitely taken note. I have followed her direction and, and what she said to do. I mean, sometimes I feel this lady is looking me in my eyes, telling me, Shalanda, God is speaking to you. Literally. Okay. So yes. And she is a preacher. She's a teacher. She's a life coach. She is a fashionista. She owns a business clothing store. Um, and she uh, has so many different um, fundraisers and she gives back to uh, women that have been tra uh, sexual track and sexual trafficking and and different things like that. So shout out to Sam Pastor Sarah Jakes and y'all her testimony, her story is amazing. She is an overcomer. She is victorious. And I love it. I love it. I love it. Yes, y'all. This is my girl. So, um, just one more thing before I get ready to pray. Um, so last week I talked about um the man that was shot by RPD five times. His name is Tyshawn Jones. That is his real name. Um, and y'all already know. I already know what time it is. It, it, for Tyshawn Jones, we're going to do it up. We're going to do it big. Not just Community Justice Initiative, Free the People Rock is doing their thing with this. Um, there's other people like Justin Morris and Anthony Hall and, you know, Diallo Payne that are you know, getting involved in this and, you know, with the family, the mothers, my condolences goes out to the family. It was really heartbreaking because I heard the mom say something about, you know, people were saying, why it took so long for the mom to come out? And when the mom spoke and told her story, I was just like, oh my goodness. The fact that this lady can even stand on her two feet. Wow. She said she had lost a loved one. I can't remember if she said um, an aunt or an uncle, but then she lost her mother. She's burying her mother and her son literally two weeks apart. The day that her son died, was shot by the police five times, was the day that they buried her mom. Insane. You know, people are saying, oh, well, you know, he shouldn't have never had the knife. There was other ways to handle it. There was other ways to handle it. I've seen it done. I've seen it done. I've seen it done. They can handle it differently, okay? So, RPD, we have for y'all. Like, we, we just going to continue to, you know, do what we got to do to make make a change. Y'all going to get with the program one way or another. I feel it. All right. All right, y'all. So, that was just a prayer call with Shalanda. I really, really hope and pray that y'all enjoy 
this show today, this podcast today, the information that was given today, the word that went forth today. Because I'm not a preacher, y'all. I'm not a pastor. But I know some stuff. It's not because of what I read. Because, yeah, you can read something and you can know it because you read it. But like, have you ever read something and then applied it to your life and it worked? Yeah, that's that's what that's what that's what it is for me. It's not the word itself. It's the actions behind it. When I get the word, I run with it. I run with it. Let me see if this works. I test God. I, I'll be like, Lord, let me see. And then it works. It may not work when you want it to. But God's all, God always shows up on time. He's always doing the doggone thing you heard. So, yeah, thank y'all for viewing um, Prayer Call with Shalanda. I am your host, Shalanda. I will see y'all next week. But before we pray first, <laughs> Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, I thank you so much for being everything that you are, a promise keeper. Loving, loyal, protecting, honest. Lord God, we pray for the uh, Franklin family, that you would touch the heart of this man, this young man, this 32-year-old grown man that's disrespecting his father. Lord, I speak strength to him, strength to his mind, strength to his heart, his spirit, his soul. Lord, you said in our weakness, your strength is made perfect. So I'm asking now that you would send your strength to this young man. Give him a heart to apologize, to turn from his wicked ways, and to change and be a better man tomorrow. Thank you, Lord, for whatever it is that he's dealing with, that you would tear it down. Whatever it is that is hurting him, whatever it is that is coming against him that is causing him to act this way. Tear it down. We bind it right now in the name of Jesus that no more humiliation to this family will come. But we speak peace. We speak understanding. We speak love and unity to this home. You said a house against itself cannot stand. So I pray right now that you build these relationships back up with this family and have your way, Lord God. I thank you, Lord God, for what you're doing, for what you're going to do, for where you're taking us, for the accomplishments, for the struggles, for the losses, for the wins, for the good days, and for the bad days. I thank you for you continuing to be the same God today, yesterday, and forevermore, and never changing on us. Thank you for your word says that you'll never leave nor forsake us. And it's true. I know it's true. And I thank you, Lord. I appreciate you for that. For being all that you are. Thank you for Gloria, Lord God. I just pray that you would cover her, that you would lift her up, that you would do a major thing in her, Lord God. Increase her expectation of you, Lord God. That you would bring more and more glory to her life and more and more revelation to her life. As she talks to you more, as she trusts you more, as her faith increases in you. I pray that you do a new thing in her, that you would transform her and that you would use her for the uplifting of your kingdom. Thank you for what you've already done. Thank you for what everything that you used her to do already. I just pray that you continue to use her mightier and mightier and mightier. Thank you, Lord, for everything. Thank you for prayer call and vibe radio station connecting and making a change, a difference. Have your way in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Boy, when I open my eyes, it is bright. <laughs> it is bright. This is Prayer Call with Shalanda. I'll see y'all next week.
Same time, same day. Bye.